All right, going to take some time to answer two letters here that we got in the mail. Um, some people I can answer uh, back through email. Some people I think it's best sometimes for me to answer questions that they ask because other people ask the same questions. And it would be something that I can, if I just answer them, then other people that are asking the same questions, you know, then they're asking me the same thing and I have to answer each person individually. Whereas if I can just kind of do it corporately, well, then it works out better that way. Um, I'm not going to be sharing any uh, thing here. Um, okay. Dear Brother Denlinger, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance brother. My name is A, and I live in the mountains of um, some place in M, Pennsylvania. I remember you mentioning in one of your letters that you were from Lancaster. If so, it is nice to meet another brother from PA. The purpose of my letter to you, um, Brother Denlinger, was to ask for some wisdom, practical um, wisdom, and possibly some deep doctrinal wisdom found in God's Word, the beloved KJV. Anyway, down to business. My first question is, number one, in your video about video games, uh, which, thank the Lord, I don't play, care to play anymore, you were talking about homesteading and show the book you had shacks and shanties could you possibly recommend any more books on homesteading living uh livestock keeping off-grid living that you think would help a skillless man like myself learn how better to live off the land i live in the woods and have access to a large yard timber and even a freshwater spring if i need it gotta love pa right um, but i don't really know how to utilize all these wonderful surroundings god has graciously provided me any insights you would have would be greatly appreciated um yeah uh sorry if i'm stumbling around a little bit sometimes you know reading people's you know handwritten letters it's you know i mess up on some of the words but um yeah the shelter shacks and shanties is kind of an old classic one um but there's one man's wilderness um dick Pranicky went up to alaska and built a cabin up there um the foxfire books are pretty good um, there's a lot of books out there on the thing of off-grid living and you can study into that stuff and whatever else there's some good stuff on YouTube that you can watch on off-grid living it's something that's going to take years to perfect even if you are an expert um, off-gridder and you know how to do everything out there which nobody knows that but even if you were conceivably that way you still have to move to a property or get to know a property and it takes, on average, about nine years to really get to know that property. Um, going through different winters, this, this year was really hard. Last year wasn't that bad. Um, you know, how did you do with firewood? Well, we ran out the one year, and we had an excess of it the other year. And so every year after that, I went from having, you know, six cords of firewood to eight cords of firewood just to be safe and having extra and I started to do my firewood at a different time and you, you have to learn to live off the land is what I'm saying. Um, does your spring that you mentioned, does it stay active year round or does it dry up in the summer months? What do you do about that? How do you get water in other ways? There's a, it's a huge amount of study that you have to do yourself and I can't instruct you how to do that. It depends on the land that you're in. Um, a lot of things that you can learn. Uh, now for my second question, a little backstory first. I've been studying my Bible for close to two years now. I consider myself to be an illegitimate student of Dr. Ruckman's, and with the help of the Bible Baptist Bookstore, I have assembled what I call the PBI Homeschool Course, which is a collection of all Dr. Ruckman's commentaries, doctrinal books, audio studies, his book on manuscript evidence, as well as Sister Ripp Ripplinger's uh, New Age Bible versions, etc., Basically everything for a real KJV Bible education. However, while studying through the book of Revelation, using the audiobook after the commentary, Dr. Ruckman was talking with the class and said something along the lines of, when you get out there preaching and teaching, don't start telling them about angels and blood-sucking angels coming out of Jupiter. Unfortunately, Dr. Ruckman didn't elaborate any more on that. So, brother, my next question is, what is the bi biblical significance of Jupiter in the Bible? I know it has something to do with the devil, Antichrist. Jupiter has one eye as well as well the Antichrist. But that's all I know. Brother, this has been bugging me for a, over a year, and I really want to find some answers. 
Is there any biblical insight you could share with me on this? I really want to know. Um, something I have not studied, honestly. There are, when it comes to be a, being a Bible-believing Christian, you'll see that there are some things in the Scriptures which point to other things outside of the Scriptures where you say, huh, I wonder if that's, there's a connection between the two. Oh, that's really interesting how the Lord set that whole thing up. And you can make comments on that, that's fine, but you have to be careful not to start teaching it as doctrine. All right, that's where Gene Kim especially, clickbait Kim, he gets really mixed up in that, and he's trying to teach stuff. He puts out a lot of stuff that Ruckman just taught as kind of an interesting connection, but don't teach this stuff doctrinally. Well, Gene Kim just comes out and he's, you know, um, clickbait Kim and, and uh, marketing his videos and, and things, trying to make merchandise of God's Word. He's greedy of filthy lucre. That's why he puts out all that stuff. That's what Peter Ruckman was saying. Don't go after a lot of the really weird stuff, just preach doctrine. You say, well, you won't get much of a following. You know, that's the whole point. Okay, um, God will prosper a man and move the man along at the right time and whatever else. But you can accelerate that process yourself by preaching the really weird, far out, bizarre stuff. So, um, you know, there's, uh, I'll give you another example. Okay, the Godhead doctrine. Um, there's three in one. Well, then you can say everything in nature is three in one. You know, you have um, water, you have what, uh, the three different things, H2O, you know, there's two hydrogen uh, molecules and one oxygen molecule. There's three in one. Um, you have the egg, you have the shell, you have the white, and you have the yolk. Oh, you know. But then you run into something it's not three, and you say, oh, well, uh, you can make some application, but don't start teaching it doctrinally, is what's being said there, okay? Um, I thank you, Brother Denlinger, for reading my letter and hopefully um, penning me back. It is really good to have fellowship of any kind with another brother in Christ, especially a brother who actually uh, went to PBI. Well, I didn't go to PBI, okay? I'm like you. I went through the homeschool version of it. That is the one... Uh, complaint I have about where I live. I'm very, very lonely out here as there isn't really any good church out here. Most of the ones we here have female pastors or an apostate denomination or, or are an apostate denomination. So there is no fellowship with the brethren where I am. I, love, I hope to hear from you soon, brother. Um, well, you asked some good questions, so that's why I made a video about it. Um, so... There's that one. Hopefully I answered the questions. You have to be careful um, with some of the stuff that Ruckman brings out. He made a lot of very interesting points, but stick to the basics of Scripture. Um, so there's that one. Now we have another one here from Montana. Uh, I thought I had another one here from him. Um, That's not the one I was looking about. Okay, give me one minute and I will be right back. All right, I found it. It was that letter there, and then I had another one laying over here. I got a lot of letters in, so things get kind of mixed up at times. Um, um, okay. I like the writing style. I'll just show this real quick here. Pretty neat. Kind of like a calligraphy or something. Dear Brian Denlinger, I would like to thank you personally for your unwavering resolve to continue preaching despite attacks and threats on you and yours. I heard one of your messages on being greedy of filthy lucre. What then is the mammon of unrighteousness? Also, okay, well, I'll stop right there. Mammon of unrighteousness is just basically saying the way that rich people, they love money and they go out and they try to get rich and whatever else and they do unrighteous things to get rich. That's what it's talking about. Um, similar to filthy lucre. Also, how can eating of meat be done if the commandment tells thou shalt not kill? Um, the Bible in the New Testament talks about thou shalt do no murder. Okay, It's talking thou shalt not kill. If you wanted to say that, well, you have to kill plants too. So that's kind of an issue. Um, for you to eat, you have to kill something. All right, For the most part. Uh, there, I realize you could get berries off of a tree or something. You aren't killing the tree, but you're eating the berry and whatever. You could make that argument. But uh, if you're cutting down most vegetables, well, you're killing them. 
Well, it's not the sense of murdering. That's what the commandment is about there. Uh, the ant that provideth meat in summer and the man that roasteth meat not taken in hunting. This is hard to comprehend. Um, in Proverbs, it's talking about that and it's basically saying um, about how that the ant is one that uh, stores up for the winter and things and that's a smart thing to do. Um, we've kind of gotten away from it because of the convenience factor of grocery stores and refrigeration. But it's a really good thing to get into seasonal eating of foods and storing up certain foods for the winter. It's a good thing, that the thing with about the ant there. But when you have a man that um, go kills an animal, you shouldn't be killing animals unless you're going to eat it. Now, obviously, if there's some kind of a, you know, raccoon or something that's getting in your trash cans and you go shoot the thing, well, I don't think you really want to eat a raccoon. I mean, if things get really desperate, maybe, but um, things that eat garbage or meat, you really don't want to eat those animals. Um, it's, you know, I'll just tell a story. We used to have squirrel problems down at the house where I grew up in um, Ronks, Pennsylvania, and uh, my childhood home, and we had a lot of squirrels, and I'd be out there shooting them all the time, um, called them tree rats. And I hated them. And I was always shooting these squirrels. And I didn't eat any of them. I would just shoot them and throw them back in the woods or whatever, let an animal eat them. That was stupid. I shouldn't have done that. That was a lot of good meat that I wasted over the years. I don't do that anymore. Um, okay, I'm just looking here. Okay. He just says some things about, you know, support of the ministry there. So I will not, I don't have to read that part there. Um, so there's that. Now let me read this one here. Um, Dear Brian Denlinger, is, is it easy to follow scripture after the years of your ministry or did it get harder to obey the law? Um, easier. It is. The more you put things into practice, the easier it becomes after a while. How am I still sinning after all my efforts, which is, why is my heart so vile? Um, because that's just the nature of man. Um, there's not a just man on the earth that doeth good and sinneth not, the Bible says. You are, you're always going to have struggles with sin. Um, as good as you can get and whatever else, you always have to be aware of the fact of temptation coming in. Um, So, you know, it's just that's the whole point of living a righteous life, a life of repentance. Uh, every day it's a fight. You know, you just have to get into fighting and enjoy the fight, and enjoy the war. You know, uh, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. All right, we're supposed to fight. You're, that's just the way it is. You don't want to fight, well, then go back to the world. See where that gets you. Uh, why is. Is there no answer when you cry? Okay. Um, well, sometimes you will weep before the Lord and you will need an answer to prayer. And for whatever reason, he just says no. Um, just uh, the last couple of days, I've been a little bit out of it because um, allergies are really bad right now. That Well, pollen is really bad. The one type of plant, I think it's, it's called uh, Timothy grass. And that Timothy grass is really bad. I'm really allergic to it. And um, the whole one day I was sneezing and blowing my nose and I ended up getting a sinus infection. Could not sleep at all that night. I got maybe about, you know, I had, I was doing all kinds of natural health stuff. I actually had to, I was at home, had to drive back into town in the middle of the night to try to do a bunch of natural health remedies that you know, we don't have access to at our property right now. I can't heat up a wood stove to heat up water that I needed. And um, so I was up you know, most of the night, and I did get a little tiny bit of sleep, maybe a couple hours, um, but that was it. And just really out of it all day yesterday, I was really out of it. They got rid of the infection and um, b tried to sleep a couple times throughout the day to try to regain my energy. I don't sleep good in the summer. It's just too hot. I sleep good in the winter. Um, in really cold temperatures, that's when I sleep great. But, uh, you know, just I wanted to get, we were going to actually go 
to a construction place and I was going to get some lumber and whatever else to reorganize some things here at the office. And I got just really, I can't really call it sick because it's just allergies, but you know, I got really messed up and, and just destroyed my plans. And it was really upsetting to me because I wanted to get things done around here. But the Lord had a reason. He did. And I was praying, Lord, I'm sorry. I wanted to get this done and whatever. And I was very upset about that. But he had a reason. There could have been some kind of an accident there. He could be setting up some kind of divine appointment for me when I go. And you have to remember that. Sometimes you'll cr cry and you'll pray. and you'll, Lord, I don't understand. Why are you doing this? I don't, I don't get it. Well, he knows. He understands why. He has it timed out. Also, what profit hath the youth in this world if we cannot do ministry? You can do ministry. I'm just simply saying in my different studies, you have to be careful about full-time ministry. Full-time ministry is not for younger men. I don't believe that for one second. You should be out learning to work with your hands. And you can do ministry while you're in that, by the way. You can minister to people. The ministry of reconciliation is given to every Christian. But what I'm saying is being a, an, a man that's an elder, uh, that's called elder for reason. Okay, you should be older. You know what I mean. Truth and goods increase, yet why is my heart always mourning? Um, how can I prepare for the dim future? Um, you can prepare for the dim future by thinking about the good future that comes after that. Okay, um, if goods and, and things increase and, and things are getting better for you, then say, well, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this blessing of today. If it gets taken from me tomorrow, well, at least I had it for today. Great, wonderful. Hey, what happens if uh, America gets invaded and, and there's troops marching down the streets and we're taken off to camp someplace to be executed? Well, then we get to go home to be with the Lord. You see? Uh, whatever happens in our lives, we are the Lord's. We're His property. And you have to think about eternity sometimes. Um, if your current state of affairs is really bad, Remember, well, at least I have heaven to look forward to if you're saved. If you're not saved, well, then, yeah, things are really bad. But, um, you know, every Christian goes through hard times, every single one of us. There's no such thing as a Christian that goes through, just doesn't go through anything. Um, so please be encouraged about that. Uh, I think this is the other one I was looking for here. One more to do. Yeah. Um, dear Brother Brian, this is from um, Alabama. Okay. Initials are J.H. First name J, last name H. Dear Brother Brian, thank you for taking time to read this letter. I know you are incredibly busy with the ministry. Your videos have been tremendously helpful in my walk with Christ, opening my eyes to things like the Bible version issue, the Godhead doctrine, and others. Recently, I was re-watching your video titled, Why I Believe That Jesus Is God the Father, to help my friend understand why I believe the same. Something you said towards the end of the video didn't quite sit right with me, though. You joked that if the Bible was wrong, then you would tell God you should have given me a better book. To be clear, I believe you are clearly right on the issue of the Godhead. That comment just seemed out of character for you. I am hoping that this is just a misunderstanding on my part. Any clarification would be greatly appreciated, your brother in Christ, J.H. Um, it was sarcasm is what I was using there. Um, I apologize if that offended you. I was not trying to be offensive. I was just simply saying these people that say that the King James Bible, there's better translations and whatever else. I was mocking that system. Of course, I do not believe that there's any book on earth that is a better book than the King James Bible. Not for one second. The King James Bible is the best, the king of all books. There's nothing higher than it, including the original autographs. Okay, they were never compiled into a single volume, so why worship them? Um, the King James Bible is God's perfect word, okay, to clarify that. I was just simply being sarcastic and saying, if I get up to heaven and the Lord says, hey, you were wrong, and say, well, then you should have given me a better book. The Lord's not going to say that, and I'm not going to say that. So that's why I was saying that. Uh, hopefully that <laughs> makes sense. Um, the King James Bible is God's perfect word. So... That will be it for answering these letters. Um, again, if I haven't gotten around to answering you or 
whatever else uh, I apologize this whole thing is just turned into a really crazy thing I mean here's one two three four five letters that I've set aside to answer and they were there and I've been trying to get to them um, there's other ones over here that have come in and I haven't answered them yet people have written me um, happy birthday cards and things thank you for those um, you know what should I do about this what should I do about that well I can offer some advice but ultimately it's your personal relationship with Jesus Christ and I try to encourage brethren to remember that um, so uh, you know I will say this one more time for the record I've had people send me letters and they say please call me and they give me their phone number I can't do that um, this is King James video ministries I try to make videos for the body of Christ to watch and for lost people to watch and get saved and understand what the Bible really teaches the truths that you will never be told in a church building that's what this ministry is I am not into phone counseling I cannot do letter writing pen pal stuff back and forth with people I get contacted by hundreds of people thousands you know maybe sometimes in, in a year I don't even know I can't keep track of it all um, I'm also a husband and a father homeschooling my son um, we both take turns with it there's some things my wife does homeschooling our son there's some things I do we also live off grid there's all this the duties of homesteading and I repair my vehicles as much as I can myself um, there's a lot to do uh, we have construction things firewood to do you know wild foraging uh, you know for berries which helps us to keep our grocery bills low and keeps our health up where it needs to be so please uh, understand that I do I do not give out my um, phone number and I do not get have a email address because uh, back when I was doing that I was spending you know seven eight hours a day answering people's emails and I was getting nowhere and I can't do that uh, I have to provide for my own and if I don't then the Bible says I've denied the faith and I'm worse than an infidel and I don't want to be that so hopefully that answers your questions thank you for your sending letters and um, we will see you in upcoming videos